All right, everybody, here we are with the, this is Greg Poole with Bow Junkie Media. We're at the 2017 True Ball Excel London, Kentucky ASA. Here with good friend, elite pro staffer, pro staff coordinator, Boom. Mr. Darren Christianberry. We've had a pretty exciting day so far today. It's been interesting. It really has. And I'm, I'm kind of excited about this known pro shoot off too, because I see a lot of blue shirts out there. I'm it's, glad. I'm glad of that. It's a. It's we either have a Smurf infestation, <laughs> or a, the elite shooters are representing hard big time. We in, are holding in the known 80, pro. Eighty percent of the top five positions <laughs> yes. out there right now. Yes. So. so we have Nathan Brooks at a 442, and then we have Donnie Thacker, Chance Bobeff, and Tyler Marlowe at a 440, and then Ted. You say it. T.J. Strakowski. Strakowski there yeah. at 436. We'll just call him T.J. How's there you go. Sound? So these guys, obviously, as you saw on film, are allowed to use rangefinders. So they'll, for, for those of you that haven't watched the other uh, videos, we will call out the yardage as, they, as the arrows are called. But these guys, this is the known pro, known pro class. So here we go. Nathan Brooks on the Warthog, which is at 31 yards. With a 10, it's probably not the way you want to start off in the known pro class. Not when I saw the guys judging out there shooting 14s. Come on, right. Nathan. That's what <laughs> <laughs> email forthcoming. Donnie Thacker with a 10 on the large alert deer, which is at 46 yards. He can't really go crazy. He's protecting a lead. Yes, exactly. And a 10 for Chance Bobeth on the Panther, which was at 39 yards. I'm a little shocked that we've had three 10s in a row, I'm not gonna lie. I think the wind's just enough to be pesky out there right now too. And a 10 on the Coyote, which is 48 and a half yards for Tyler Marlowe. And it looks like uh, looks like your boy TJ here might have uh, might have went for some deeper water. TJ didn't shoot no 10. No, not on the Bobcat, which is only at 24 yards. <laughs> and a 14 for TJ. 450. 450. So there we go. So we got Nathan Brooks at 452, and then everybody else at 450 heading into our second arrow. <laughs> go arrow number two in the known pro at the 2017 ASA in London Kentucky brought to you by true ball and Excel got a lot of elite jerseys out there and uh, one Hoyt standalone in Donnie Thacker uh, Nathan Brooks holding a two-point lead which in this class really isn't a lead at no, all no. Uh, unless scoring's done then it's a lead yeah uh, and everybody else at 450 so here we go Tyler Marlowe with an eight on the Bobcat. That was the 24-yard Bobcat. He hit just, just off the 14. That looks pretty good from here. My eyes aren't good enough, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna reserve judgment. We'll let the guys get out there. And a 12 for Chance Bobeff on the 48 and a half yard Coyote. It's trying to get, trying to get practiced up for that OPA next month. Oh yeah, them, them I'm looking bombs. forward to that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Donnie Thacker on the Panther. It's a 30, 39 yard Panther with an eight. That's that's gonna hurt. Mm. He's gonna have to start gunning for him now. That's all there is He's to it. He's gonna have to have some range. Yep, yep. Nathan Brooks on the large alert deer at a 10. This shoot down's not going like I expected. No, no. And like the wind is, the wind's not bad right now, but nope. it has been at times a little pesky. Yeah. Those rings can, are yep. not very forgiving and at times. There you go. And Ted. On the 31 yard bore. 12. 12 for TJ. So there we go. So we have Nathan Brooks and Ted Krasinski and Chance Bobeff at 462. Stroganoff, Krasinski, Strakowski. Um, I think it's Strakowski. I all of them. We're going to call him TJ. Donnie Thacker and Tyler Marlowe at a 458, heading into our third arrow.
All right, here we go, everybody, with our third arrow in the known pro. Everybody's pretty much packed in there within a couple points of each other, and in this class, it can go, it can go another way super quick. So haven't seen a whole lot of people gunning for 14s, uh, but as things get down to these last couple arrows, Darren, I just don't think they're going to have a choice. They're going to have to because uh, I see somebody went aggressive that time. We'll see what he got. Okay. So here we go. Head. Tyler Marlowe Marlo on the bore. 12. The good looking Marlowe brother, he says. He's the pretty one. How is Mike pronouncing his name so good he and we can't right. get it right? Another 12. For TJ with another 12, 474. That's three rings in a row for TJ. It, it is. And they better not sleep on him. Mm -hmm. He can s slide right in there. Twelve for Nathan Brooks, called the upper. That's going to be exactly what he needed to maintain a tie for the lead. See if Chance Bobeff did anything down here to uh, eight for Donnie. That's two eights in a row. That's probably going to be a wrap for Donnie Thacker. He's going to have to chase some rings. He's got the two shortest targets to go after, yep. though. So here we go, Chance Bobeff. Chance Bobeff on the Bobcat at 24 yards. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he went for a 14. And Chance Bobeff with a 14 on the Bobcat. And your new leader. And your new leader, Chance Bobeff. All right, here we go, Darren, heading into the fourth arrow on the known pro. Got our, got ourselves a new leader, Chance Bobeth. Um, se several other guys super close, Nathan Brooks, TJ, uh, only two, two points off. And then uh, we got Tyler Marlowe at a 470. So things are still tight right there. Donnie Thacker sh shooting back-to-back -back eights. Pretty much going to be the... Going to pretty much be the end of his day. I think they're just getting warmed up. 14 for Donnie Thacker. It looks like there was some rings hit that round. Well, let's hope so. I think uh, both you and I would have lost the bet on how this how this shoot off was going to go. And a 12 for Nathan Brooks. That's good. That that's, helps Nathan. That's going to be a good move for Nathan right there. I talk, talked with him in his interview the other day, and he was – he was ready for a good day. Yeah, he's been shooting good, so solid all good year. Weekend. Just, just a little mistake here and there is keeping him out yep. of it. He's got a 12 of his own. 12. TJ. That's four rings in a row for TJ. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, that's what you got to do in this class. Wow. I mean, you can't just come out here and shoot no. center tens in the known pro. Tyler. Tyler with an eight. That's going to drop him down a bit. For all intents and purposes, that's probably going to end Ty Tyler's day. He's eight points behind the leaders right now. Yep. Chance Bobeff with an upper 12 on the 31 yard bore. Uh oh. They're looking at it pretty close. I hear Kelsey hollering 12. <laughs> she thinks it's in. <laughs> right. He didn't quite have the he didn't quite have the crowd support Brian Lou Allen had, but still not He's too bad. It. And a 12 for Chance Bobeff. 488 and yes. still the leader. Chance Bobeff maintains the lead by two points over teammate Nathan Brooks heading to the fifth arrow. All right, enough of this politicking for school. All right, here we go, heading into the fifth arrow in the known pro, the 2017 True Ball Excel 
ASA in London, Kentucky. Chance Bobeff has taken the lead, maintains a two-point lead over teammate Nathan Brooks. Things are going to have to start heating up here. Uh, these these guys are going to have to start gunning for some rings, Darren. <laughs> and I see it. They're flying at them out there. I love it. 14 on the Warthog for Chance Bobeff. That was for oh, Donnie. that was for Donnie Thacker. I'm sorry. 494 for Donnie. He needed that, just just for just for general purpose. Chance. Ten for Chance. 498. 498 for Chance. Tyler's looking good there. Tyler with a 14. 492. 14 on the Bob on the uh, Black Panther. TJ for his fifth ring in a row. What'd he get? 10. Breaks, br breaks the run. 496. That's a great run there for Ted. Absolutely. Well, let's see what uh, let's see what Nathan managed to do on this on this bobcat here. It's only 24 yards, but yeah, not a lot to see there. No. 14. Five for Nathan Brooks. Hundo. He's at a he's at Nathan Brooks is at 500 with a two point lead over Chance Bobeff, four point lead over TJ. Wow, that's, they're all uh, in it. That's all in it. Heading into our sixth and final Sudden Victory Arrow. All right, here we go, Darren. We're heading into our sixth and potentially final arrow in the known pro with the 2017 ASA in London, Kentucky. Don Don has moved moved them behind the line. They are shooting shooting the coyote out there at a at a at a 49 and a half yards. It was tough and it got tougher. Yes, it did. Yes, it, <laughs> it did. It helps when you know the distance, though. That's these guys should yes. These guys should attack these rings. No doubt about it. Tyler, Tyler Marlowe up first at a 492. That's going to be a five for Tyler Marlowe. So Donnie Thacker is sitting at a 494. So he's six points behind the leader. I mean, so so he 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 does have the opportunity to potentially sneak up onto the podium if mm -hmm. he makes something happen here. He's going to need a ring to make a move. Yes. And of course, the wind starts to pick up for Donnie mm -hmm. Th Thacker right here. It so. Makes it even tougher. Yes, absolutely. Not going to be super easy for Donnie here on this 49 and a half yard. He went after it. Okay. He's for a Coyote. So let's see what we got to call for Donnie Thacker. Don, Don was a little late on the uptake down there, trying to run down without his pants falling down there. And that's a five for Donnie Thacker. 499 for Donnie Thacker. <laughs> Mike Terrell having some fun with the with the known pros out there. So here we go. Ted, Ted Strakowski. TJ. TJ. He just got this new Revel Wednesday, I think it is. Oh, really? He's only had it a few days. We actually just gave gave away. Well, here we go. We just gave away one of those new Revels on Bo, Bo Junkie here last week, and it went over amazing. 10 for Ted. That puts him at a 506. Guaranteed third place for Ted with a bow he's had since Wednesday. That's not Wednesday, bad. I think, yeah. He just bad. got it. Said it's a little more holding weight than he's used to, but he loves it. Said it aimed great, so he's shooting it well. I was going to say. Chance Bobeff has been in this position for many, many years. A lot of years. Lots and lots of times. He needs an eight to tie TJ. A 12. 
Wolves to go 10 points ahead of Nathan. Right. So this puts this puts Chance in a... He has to make a decision. How aggressive? Mm, absolutely. Well, Chance is usually pretty aggressive. But we'll we'll see what he does here. Oh, he's he's been uh, he's looking for a twelve. Looking for a twelve. Chance has been a little quiet this year. Let's see what uh, let's see what Don says down there. And a twelve for it. Chance Bobeff. Five ten. Now Nathan needs a ten to tie, and then yes. that'd force another arrow. Yes, it would. Because first place cannot be determined by anything other than score. Than score. Mm -hmm. So what do you think he does here? He's been shooting solid all week, and do you think he goes for the tie and risk it, or does he? Uh, he goes for the 12 to win. You think he calls upper 12, and then if he bobs low, he's, they go to another arrow? Potentially. I think he'll aim safe side of the lower. I think there's some marks down there to really see. I don't okay. think Nathan's shooting a lens this weekend either. So. Oh. He knows where this low 12 is. I think he'll play a safe to try to clip it and worst case scenario, force another arrow, but you don't want to give chance too many chances to win. No, so so you think Nathan here will aim for the aim for the top part of the lower 12? I think so, yeah. Okay. Well, I didn't see him call upper 12, mm -mm. so. <laughs> that will probably do it. Nathan Brooks is your known pro champion. All right, so I'm here with your 2017 known pro champion Nathan Brooks you uh, this has been a we, we talked the other day this is this has got to be a this has got to feel good give me a second it's all right buddy totally this was a this was a good one for you you've uh, you finished last year strong came out here came out here this year and you've been you've been right on the cusp several times we talked about it you've been in that I mean you've been in almost every top 10 and it's just been that that one or two little that one or two things here or there that kind of brought brought things out so we uh, we uh, super happy to see you win this thing so uh, th this has got to feel good to get that first win underneath your belt there I can't even begin to describe it I mean first off all the Thanks, buddy. Take your time, buddy. It's no problem, man. I totally understand. It's all good. It's what it is, buddy. Don't worry about that ch check over there. That's not the one you cash anyway. That wasn't that wasn't for me. Just winning. Just winning. I'll be right back. All right. We'll go catch up with Nathan here in a minute. All right, so uh, we're back. Nathan went over and uh, got got his happy Gilmore checks. So uh, so let's pick up where where we were there. We uh, we talked the other day, and uh, you've been I mean you've been so close this year. You know, obviously with the bow change, that was something we talked about. So kind of tell us how this feels. You know, obviously there's all kinds of sayings, the monkeys off the backs, and all that other kind of you know rubbish. But uh, how does this feel? Well, I mean for me. This is kind of like winning a Vegas tournament, and I know that it ain't Vegas, um, but it, for me it has that feel because um, I'm shooting against people that know how far everything is. This is not a, a, a yardage win for me, you know, like um, it, this is a shooting. I worked my butt off to get to this point and shoot these bows. The amount of hours I put in shooting and effort, it just, it's finally, you know, you finally see it come to fruition, and it's it's overwhelming. And uh, I mean, I I don't care if I'm emotional. I really don't because it's a it's a big deal to me. And um, I mean, I'm thankful that I have this opportunity. I was out here yesterday, shooting a <clears throat> practice range and shooting with Austin. You know, and he does it in a wheelchair. And uh, what a blessing. Absolutely. Well, it's been uh, it's been great to watch you continue to work like you have, and to to get to the point that you have right now. Obviously, everybody's been watching. You're one of the the crowd favorites, the sport favorites. You're one of the good guys, and so talk with us a little bit about you know confidence is key, 
And when when you get close and you don't get there, there you always try to find a reason. You always try to you, you internalize and you do all that kind of stuff. Now that you're here and you're on the top of the podium and you've got over that hump, tell us what this means for your confidence moving forward. Well, it's <coughs> excuse me, it's it's huge. That was a good one. Yeah, it was. I don't know where it came from, but I don't really care. Nope. Um, it, it's huge. Um, more than anything, it just uh, you know, I mean, confidence is 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 huge. I, I totally understand. I mean, confidence is a major thing. I mean, when I stepped up to that coyote, I didn't have any doubt that I could hit the twelve. It was, you know, you just gotta execute. And um, so, I mean, it definitely helps in confidence and um, moving forward. I, I mean, I would want to say it's great, but the problem is every weekend these guys are fantastic. And you know, when you have a good weekend like I had just this past weekend, you you got to capitalize, and it's so hard to get a win. I mean, you don't just walk out here and have a good weekend and, and you win. Right. You walk out here, you have a good weekend, and you still finish tenth. You know, so you have to bring it to that next level. And you know, I had a few, I had a couple of eights today, and obviously every time I come out here, I, my goal is to never fire an eight, but it happens, and you got to be able to overcome it and pick up a target or two here and there that normally you wouldn't hit and I hit one in the dark this morning a 47 48 yard panther in the dark that was it was just that it's a shot in the dark you know so kind of make up for one of those eights a little bit but um you really don't ever make up anything because these guys don't give you enough opportunities to make mistakes so you know like I said unbelievably blessed to to have this opportunity to even do this for uh, you know a living and um and to do it for the, these guys in blue for Elite and all of my sponsors, not just Elite, but uh, you know everybody, Easton and He Dog Archery, and, you know the Cam Protector and uh, Doinker Stabilizers and um, Winner's Choice Bowstrings, Scott Archery, CBE. You know you, we can't do it without all them guys. Morel Targets. That's where I got my start in this was from Del Morel. You know to be able to allow me to go to these tournaments. So they have no idea how much I'm grateful to them. Uh, for this opportunity and this puts food on my table for my kids and clothes on my back so uh, it's a big deal it's a really big deal and um, I'm thankful for the opportunity I'm thankful for you guys too um, you know without the media production that you guys put on and, and what all you do um, you know we don't get the coverage we need and that that definitely helps us with our sponsors and things like that so it's all one big uh, one big family affair, basically. But uh, anyway, I'm just a thankful guy that, that it's worked out and it's a good weekend. All right, bud. Congratulations. We look forward to uh, seeing you again soon. Appreciate it. Thanks.